Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Pardon our mess, but as you can probably tell by all of the boxes, we're in the process of moving! Soon we'll be saying goodbye to Gainesville, Florida, and saying hello just a few hours south down in Tampa, Florida. But moving means that I need to prepare all of my 3D printers and get them boxed up and ready for the move. And I figured, while I take a look at the resin printers, I would bring you guys along for the ride. Because A, resin printers are pretty cool and not a whole lot of people have had a chance to uh, play around with them and to experience them. So I figured I'd bring you along to show you what the process of getting it ready to move would be like. And also I wanted to show you guys what old resin looks like. This Nobel 1.0A right here, this printer hasn't been touched since we moved last September. So it's been a good eight or nine months since I've used this machine, and this machine's been having resin sit in it this entire time. So I wanted to take a look at that resin and see how it compares to some fresh resin, because I've heard that resin expires over time, it has a shelf life. So let's see if that's actually true, and we can compare that. So let's get these printers ready to move, shall we? So first, let's take the top off. And there we go. So let's bring you guys in closer and let's take a look at this. So this is the inside of the Nobel 1.0A. It has the resin vat here that holds the liquid resin. It has the build plate up top that gets lowered into the vats and it prints with a UV laser that shines up underneath and cures a little bit of that resin. And if we take a look on the inside of here, there is still resin. So when I moved this printer last time, uh, I did it in a kind of stupid way and I didn't empty this vat. I just kind of covered everything with saran wrap and I had to be very careful when I moved it. Um, but I learned that uh, it's way easier just to take this vat out and empty the resin out of the vat. That way you don't have to worry about spillage. It all can just sit in the resin container back there and you don't have to really be careful with it. So that's gonna be part of the plan today. And if I take a closer look at this, there's actually a little bit of uh, printed material floating around back here. So that may be part of a failed print, or it may be some unsupported material that popped off during a print. Um, over time, stuff can kind of settle into this tank. Uh, so let's first get that out. But first, when working with resin, wear your gloves. Protect yourself. And you'll probably need a few more pieces of equipment. You'll want a plastic uh, scraper or spatula to work with. You'll also want a container of isopropyl alcohol to clean stuff off with and a bunch of paper towels. Okay, let's remove what's in there. Oh yeah, there is certainly something floating around. So you can take it and gently scrape it off the bottom. So that looks like a lump of cured resin, which probably indicated this came from a failed print that I didn't know was still floating around there. But luckily it doesn't look like it harmed the bottom of this build vat at all. So we can just take this and get rid of it. So next I'm gonna take the scraper and I'm just going to uh, poke around in the vats and see if there's any other bits of uncured resin. Uh, because we will be pouring this back into the bottle. And so if there's any large clumps that we can get rid of now, that'll save us a little bit of time. Uh, but it looks like the rest of this vats is pretty clean. Yep, I don't see anything else around there. It is oddly satisfying dragging this through here though. You can see just the viscosity of this resin and it's scraping along the bottom of this uh, silicone lined build vat here. But if we take a look at the bottom of this vat, I don't see any clouding, I don't see any other debris in the bottom. So the vat itself doesn't look like it's been damaged sitting out for the last eight months. Uh, so that's a good sign because these vats, they do get damaged over time as you print, they become cloudy. Uh, you can see the video linked above for uh, an example of that and how to replace these vats. So these vats are relatively expensive, so the fact that I probably won't have to replace this one is a good sign. So let's compare some of this resin. So as I've said before, this resin is cured by UV light and it's been sitting in this printer, which has been in an office with a window for the last eight months. So what I'm curious about is if any of the UV from the sun has found its way into the printer and damaged this resin. So I can do that by comparing this resin to the same resin, but that's been sitting in the bottle. 
and hopefully this bottle would do a whole lot better at blocking UV light because it's black plastic um, as compared to the printer, which is just shielded with uh, this hood here that does have some dark acrylic, but it may not block 100% of UV lights. And also, this resin's been exposed to oxygen. It's just been open, so there's a lot of oxygen that can get into it. Whereas this bottle, there's probably a little less oxygen that's seeped into it. Um, it's connected via just these two hoses up top. So we can see if maybe the oxygen has also damaged it. So let's get some samples of these resin, and I can compare it using a UV flashlight. And we'll see if it still cures, and if they cure at the same time. So on the right we have the resin from the bottle, and on the left we have the resin from the vat. And just off the bat you can tell that the vat is discolored. So while the resin in the bottle is still pretty much clear, the vat resin uh, that's been exposed to possibly UV lights and oxygen has discolored and it looks a little bit more yellow. So right off the bat we can tell that it's definitely had an effect. So now we can test how it cures using this UV flashlight. So now I'm going to shine the light about two inches above each sample for five seconds. Okay, let's test the resin. Oh, yep, there is definitely a solid bit of resin here in the middle from the resin in the bottle. So the resin in the bottle is starting to solidify. So the resin in the vats also looks like it's started to solidify and it looks about the same size too. Let's get a close up of that. So hopefully you can tell just about the diameter of the cured resin here. And here's the diameter of the resin from the vats. So at first glance, I can't tell a difference in how well it cures just from that little bit. So let's actually remove those bits of cured resin, wash it off in some isopropyl alcohol, and we can compare them up close. So I typically do a two-stage rinse. I will grab the part, dump it in a first stage of rubbing alcohol to get most of the resin off. And then I'll take that same part and dump it in same isopropyl alcohol, um, but this will just make sure it's really clean. There's no other resin on the surface because over time, uh, this first bath will get contaminated with uncured resin. Um, and so it'll kind of come dirty and stick to the surface. So this two-stage approach is perfect. So here are the two resins. The one on the right is the one from the bottle. The one on the left is the one from the vat. And they look identical to me. I can't spot any difference. They both look just as transparent as one another. I can't tell any kind of discoloration. There are a couple of hairs and spots uh, that may have come from the bath that I used since it was an old bath with some old isopropyl alcohol. Or it could just be dust floating around my workshop. You know, I am packing up and all that. Um, but from a translucence and transparency point of view, they look identical. So that is good news. That means that the resin in the vats is still good to go. That's good. That means I didn't waste any resin here. Okay, so enough playing around. Let's start to pack this thing up. So since we determined that the resin in the bottle still cures, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten the lid here and I'll just keep it in the bottle. I don't have another lid uh, that is sealed. I lost the original cap for this. So this does have uh, two openings for the two hoses back here, um, but I think I'll be good enough just to grab a uh, glove and seal it over there. And this will A, help oxygen, prevent oxygen from getting in. And if it starts to kind of uh, flow over or something during transportation, Hopefully this glove can prevent uh, some spillage there. So this is good to go. Now the resin in the vats, I'm going to store in its own bottle. So this is just an empty bottle uh, that the resin originally came in and it has a full cap. So I can just pour it back in here. 
Now, luckily these trays are easy to remove. They just slide on out. They just got two little clips on the side that are spring loaded and allow it to release. Uh, however, you can see as I pull it off, it reveals uh, this window, which underneath is where the laser sits and shines up. Now we don't want anything to get on this window. So what I wanna do is as soon as I remove the vat, which was protecting the window, um, I want to cover it. So I'm actually going to put the cover back on as soon as I remove this vat. So vat is removed. I can set that down. And let's take a quick look at this window. So you want this window to be perfectly clean. So if anything gets on it, uh, you want to clean it off because um, otherwise it'll impede the laser and it won't print. So now we can take a look at the vat itself. It's a clear plastic container that holds the resin. In the back is this little floater valve uh, that will detect the level of resin. So as the resin increases, the floater will rise and uh, it'll tell the printer that it's full of resin. And as you use resin, that floater will sink and it will tell the machine to pump more resin in. So this, uh, the Nobel 1.0A does have an auto feed for the resin, which is really handy. And in the bottom of the vat is actually a silicone liner. It's either silicone or Teflon, I do not remember. Uh, but there's a liner on the bottom and what that does is it helps uh, the prints as it's cured and being printed um, it will actually stick to both the bottom of the build vat and the build plate itself. And so that Teflon liner uh, allows that print to be separated so that it doesn't just, you know, glue itself to the bottom of this vat. Uh, so over time, because of the stress on that liner, um, it'll actually damage the liner, it'll start to get cloudy, and uh, eventually you do have to replace this vat. But like I said before, this vat looks perfectly clean on the bottom, so I don't think I need to replace it. So we can really see the discoloration of that liquid resin. That's supposed to be perfectly clear, but yeah, it is definitely has a yellow uh, appearance to it. So let's pour it in the bottle. So you don't have to get all of it out. You just have to get most of it out. Um, we just want to prevent kind of sloshing or splashing of the resin while the printer is being moved. And so if there's just a little bit on the bottom, that's not going to affect things. But I typically hold it here until it starts uh, to until it starts to drip. If it's still ribboning, there's still a little bit in there. And you can also use a funnel or other ways of getting it to back into the container. But you definitely want to pour it into an opaque container. Um, you want to keep as much light away from this as possible. So the black plastic will prevent UV lights from uh, accidentally curing the resin. If you were to put this into like a clear plastic container and you didn't keep it in a dark spot, uh, it will kind of ruin that resin. So black plastic is where you want to go. And I think that'll be enough. So let me just wipe any remainder off. And then we will grab some paper towels. And I generally apply a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just wipe up any of the resin that got on the outside of the container. And now that we're ready to put it back, we can take the lid off. And just like with the bottom of the window, uh, you want to be careful when handling this to not touch the bottom of the vat. Because if you're putting fingerprints and stuff on the bottom here, well, that's just going to impede the laser as well. So keep the bottom clean, keep that window clean. And we can just slide the vat back in. Now you may notice there's a little bit of a uh, spill here on the side. So I'll just take my same rag, get a little bit of that isopropyl alcohol, and we will just clean that off. Make sure it's all nice and tidy. And there we go. This printer is ready to move. We don't have to worry about resin sloshing anywhere. It's clean. Um, I'm not going to worry about the bed being raised uh, or any of the other internal mechanisms. I think that this will survive the move just fine. Um, just make sure everything's kind of tight so it doesn't accidentally like fall off. Um, but if you're taking care of when moving this and you're not putting it in the back of, I don't know, a U-Haul truck with things, you know, bouncing off of it. I think that this will move just fine uh, without any kind of bracing or strapping. 
Uh, so we can put the lid back on and we should be good to go. And while we're packing, we can pack up some of the castable resin I have left. Now this vat is filled with castable resin. It's resin that acts very much like jeweler's wax and designed to be printed and then cast uh, for jewelry or rings, you know, that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in how I use this castable resin, you can actually see how I made an engagement ring using 3D printing with this. You can click that link up in the cards. Uh, so let's go ahead and empty this. When I last moved, I just left it in the vats. I didn't think about emptying it, but that worked out well the last time. So let's empty this back into the container. And you can take a look at the awesome color of this resin. Uh, this looks about the same as the fresh resin. It's supposed to be this nice orange color. Uh, so I don't think that this is discolored much like the, um, the other clear resin was. Uh, but I want to be especially careful with this resin because this resin is really expensive. Um, two bottles, which is a liter of this resin, cost about $340, which is about three times as much as the normal resin. So I want to be careful to try not to spill as much as I possibly can with this thing. So let's give it a try. And you can tell that this resin is much less viscous than the clear resin. It just kind of flows right out of the build vats. So again, I'm not trying to get the vat perfectly empty. I just want to make sure that it doesn't continue to slosh around while it gets put in a box and moved around. And so if you take a look at this build vat, the bottom of it has a whole lot of resin. Um, and that happened during the last move. Some of this resin sloshed around and got on the backside there. So I'm going to have to clean this vat uh, pretty thoroughly before I can use it again. But after cleaning, we can cover it in saran wrap and this will be good to go. Now in front of me is the Moai SLA 3D printer. If I open the door, it looks very similar. There's the resin vat down below with the build plate up above, and it's the same process of a laser shining underneath. So with this one, the resin vat does just slide on out. And as you can see, I've already uh, removed most of the resin on here. So this resin was a gray resin, so it has gray pigments in it. Uh, and you can see that there is still some of the gray pigment down at the bottom. I find with the pigmented resins, if they sit in the build vats, the pigments will actually fall out of suspension inside of the resin and it'll actually coat the bottom of the Teflon liner here. And so you have to take an instrument and kind of scrape the bottom up and kind of stir the resin uh, to get that pigment mixed back in. So I found that for this, I want to empty it after every print just to prevent uh, any of that pigment from settling out. But I've already removed most of the resin from here, so I don't have to worry about it sloshing during the move as well. And I can simply just push this back in. And then the Moai is also good to go. So that was a fun little experiment. And now that the printers are all ready to be moved, I can put them into boxes and uh, ship them down to Tampa. So again, I apologize for the messy conditions, but I am so excited to move down and show you guys the new setup down there. So thank you all for joining me. I hope that you learned a little bit and I hope that you find the resin printers as interesting as I do because they are pretty awesome machines. So thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you, well, down in Tampa.